Mbak, itu Mbak, masker Mbak. Udah ngomong dia. Good morning everyone. Morning. Okay. How are how are everyone? I hope that everyone of you is doing well. So welcome to the International Conference Dialogue on Art and Design, Transcultural Dialogue on Art and Design. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Prima Safarani and I'll be your host for today's event. This seminar is organized by the Faculty of Fine Arts and Design of Jakarta Institute of Arts to present studies from academics and art practitioners who have a focus on transcultural discourse in art and practice, which includes fine arts and crafts, visual communication design, interior design, and fashion. Within this framework, the seminar will focus on four specific topics, which are global art and transcultural aesthetics, transcultural ties and identities, vast dissemination of images, ideas, and meaning, and last but not least, art as a means to challenge the dominant power. Please take note that the seminar will be broken down into two sessions with a one hour break at 12 p.m. Jakarta time. First of all, I would like to show my sincerest gratitude to all of you for attending this event. Now, before I forget, I would like to read the following guidelines for this event. Please make sure your Zoom ID shows your actual name and please turn on your camera. To avoid any interruptions, please make sure that your microphone is muted. All participants who are in the webinar can ask questions in the Q&A column. The moderator will select only several questions to be presented due to time constraints for the discussion session. Please use the virtual background provided in the chat column. And also, please fill out the absent form 30 minutes before this event is over to get your certificates. There will be a link provided in the chat column. Now, before we proceed, let us sing our national anthem, Indonesia Raya, followed by the song of our beloved alma mater, Jakarta Institute of Arts. Please make sure that your microphones are muted to avoid any interruptions. Oh, 
everyone. Now to start today's agenda, I would like to invite our distinguished Dean of Fine Arts and Design, Mr. Anindio Vidito, to present his opening speech in relation to today's event. Without further ado, please welcome Mr. Anindio Vidito. Thank you, Tara. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's morning time in Jakarta. Dear honorable keynote speakers, Dr. Indah Cahewolan, MSN, from Jakarta Institute of Arts, and then Reni Akitelek Boya from Wali Chafu Collective, Nairobi, then Rodolfo Andaur, a curator and cultural manager from IKK, Republic of Chile, Grace Shiroka, independent artist, Aisal of Butte from Scotland, and then Lian Ladia, curator of the David Irland House of 500 Cap Street, San Francisco. And also, dear honorable moderators, Dr. Madia Patra, M. Hum, and Taruna Kusmayadi, BOA. And also, dear honorable all of partic participants uh, in PTs and committee. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the international seminar with the theme Transcultural Dialogue on Art and Design, or ICDET. This event is organized by the fields of research, innovation, and community service Faculty of Art and Design, Jakarta Institute of Arts, to improve international standards study and research programs. I hope that this international seminar can build a discourse analysis in responding to the existence of art, which so far seems to be centered in the West or known as a Euro-American strentism. It is hoped that various studies, thought, ideas, and criticism submitted by resource persons, academics, researchers, artists, and scientific articles from seminar participants can criticize this view. Thank you very much to all the keynote speakers, participants, 
and the organizing committee who supported this event. Healthy greetings to all of us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your wonderful speech, Mr. Anidio. Next up, I would like to introduce the moderator for the first session of today's event. Her name is Dr. Madhya Patra Ismar. She is currently the Vice Rector for Jakarta Institute of Arts for Research and Innovations. She is also Chief Editor for the Chikini National Arts Journal at Jakarta Institute of Arts. Dr. Madhya has conducted research on transformation of Silak Harimau Minangkabau oral traditions and performance for her dis dissertation at the Faculty of Arts and Cultural Sciences at University of Indonesia. She also has many experiences at the, as the speaker and interpreter for workshops and master classes at Gutha Institute regarding topics about arts and humanities. Everyone, please welcome Dr. Madia Patra Isma. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Tara, for that wonderful introduction. Uh, I'd like to introduce our three esteemed keynote speakers before we start this uh, session. And today, I'd like I proudly uh, introduce the first keynote speaker, Dr. Indah Cahaya Wulan, MSN. She will be presenting her speech and presentation on Instagram as a medium of transcultural interaction. She graduated from the Faculty of Fine Arts and Design, Bandung Institute of Technology for her doctorate in 2016 with the Scholarship of Excellence from the Ministry of Education and Culture. She received her master's degree from the Graduate School of Jakarta Institute of Arts, focusing on urban arts and cultural industries in 2011. Currently, she serves as rector of Jakarta Institute of Arts and keeps her duty as lecturer at the Visual Communication Design Study Program of the Faculty of, Fine, of Arts and Design. She joins the National Accredi Accreditation Board for Higher Education as Assessor and for Higher Education Ministry. She also is a member of the Visual Communication Design Study Program Association. And she also is a practitioner in the Designer Association of Indonesian Graphics and has many experiences in curatorial and display at international and national exhibitions. Our next esteemed keynote speaker is Rudolfo Andaur. His presentation is on the topic, Curating Territorial Research Trips. Rudolfo Andaur is a visual arts curator, writer, and cultural manager. He studied journalism and holds an MA in art history. He has worked directing, promoting, and diffusing transdisciplinary, transdisciplinary projects. Furthermore, Rudolfo has participated in teams focusing on a critical analysis and reflection on the Anthropocene, Anthropocene climate change, and eco-geopolitics in Latin America. Not only do those proposals produce knowledge through the visual arts, but they have also contributed to the dissemination of renewed thoughts to research into unknown territories. With this background, his work has been prized both by regional governments for his contribution to cultural management and international projects called Examples to Follow, Man Expedition in Aesthetics and Sustainability, and he has been involved in many curatorial residencies in Brazil, Denmark, Germany, Mexico, Morocco, and New Zealand, Poland, Scotland, etc. And is currently a columnist in several online art magazines and a visiting lecturer at a couple of universities and arts institutes. Our other uh, Keynote speaker, Rene Akitelek Mboya, will be presenting the presentation titled, 
Lullaby for a Small Death on Mythology and Mortality in the Archive. Renee Boya is a writer, curator, and filmmaker. Her custom is one that relies on biography and storytelling as a form of research and production. Renee is presently preoccupied with looking and speaking about images and the way in which they are produced, but especially how they have come to play a critical role as evidence of white paranoia and as aesthetic idioms of racial violence. Renee works between Dakar, Kigali, and Nairobi and is a collaborator creative editor with the Wali Chafu Collective in Nairobi. I'd like to invite now our first esteemed keynote speaker, Dr. Indah Cahya Wulan, MSN, Instagram as a medium of transcultural interaction. Dr. Indah, I give the floor to you. Thank you. Um, okay. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Um, okay, today I will tell you about transculturality in social media. Uh, this presentation will give some example that we actually see every day, experience, and we are part of the process itself. Maybe we can look a background. We all know with the fast development of technology, people are increasingly getting connected each day. Society is built and functions through people's connection and interaction. The explosion of information globally its, and its complexity have required people to share resources and flexible mode of collaboration. This that uh, by Apadurai, in globalized, globalization, cultural practice and ideology are interacted and they infect and create new contexts. A new context, as suggested by Penico, takes place through a cross-cultural process, through borrowing, mixing, and remaking that result in a new process of form. The development of communication media is so fast nowadays, especially social media are using the process massively. And in my opinion, the process can be categorized as transculturation. Let's see in slide three. Uh, this one, Fernando Ortiz, was responsive again the static description of culture and nation. Uh, and it was to underline the complex process and diversity in colonization and immigration in 1940, uh, which had influenced the formation of Cuban culture. In the past, the process transculturation took place mainly in the period of colonization. We have to uh, survive, survive uh, cultural survival uh, because of colonization. Now, transcul transculturation has turned into the foundation of a new study in the fields of humanities and social science. The contribute to rethinking process on the idea of cultural globalization in various intersection and cross border diversity. Center of study in many parts of the world has participated in building and developing the pers perspective of transculturation through transcultural dialogue. What is transcultural dialogue? Transcultural dialogues is part of the efforts to critically understand the power that has saved people, current life, the latest cultural issue, use of the latest technology, and response to the complexity of changes, the global issue, by way of networking and sharing, such as the transculturation dialogue for minority literature and linguistic, education, communication, nursing, etc., and what we are now discussing. Uh, 
Adding to this terminology of transculturation, Pratt suggests that transculturation occurs in a space where different cultures encounter, collide, and fight each other that allow new forms of culture beyond the origin of the culture. Wolfgang also stated that transculturation occurs at the moment it goes beyond classic cultural boundary, beyond great geographical and national traditional boundaries, which is on the same page as what was stated by Abu Erub, that in transculturation culture is always in relational position, complex and dynamic in the forms of attachment, exchange, porosity, and hybridization. Monseri said, transculturation is beyond the perspective of different cross-cultural connection that can be identified. The term beyond should be understood as being able to go to past the boundaries of cultural ideas. Based on the opinion of the scholars cited above, it suggested that transculturation is a process of culture formation with this characteristic hybrid, dynamic, beyond geographical boundaries cultural boundaries, and it creates context or a new form. Let's see a characteristic of cultural action. This is a process. In the process, transculturation always take place through the contact of two or more different cultures, and today age, transculturation takes place as a consequences of immigration wave and globalization of phenomenon. We see the transculturation, immigration wave, globalization phenomenon. The process can be direct or indirect with the community adopting new culture or it can be imposed. Dipaksa, yeah. In, in colonization, uh, it can be imposed. But it, it's a gradual process. In a low degree or in high degree. In low degree, one's own culture or some major aspect of it are preserved while some aspect of the dominant group culture are assumed as a natural response of adaptation, adaptation or survival. In high degree of transculturation, there is a radical process through which external cultural identity is assimilated to the point where one's own culture disappears. In high degree, uh, own culture disappears. That's next. Then we discuss about social media. Social media networks are mode of social interaction. It, it is a platform of sharing and discussing among human beings. A space that gives room for connection, interaction, expression, information, productivity, and more. Social media can include text, audio, video, image, podcast, or other multimedia communication elements. Let's see about social media. For example, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, WhatsApp, TikTok, etc. The structure of the social media that built uh, include the following web address. This is the address of the social media platform. You know, uh, www, Facebook, and twitter.com, and etc. This is what you punch on your smartphone uh, before you can access. Uh, web identity, web application, profile, contents, engagement, business. Content and engagement, uh, this is uh, most important in social media. Content, these are your posts that you put out in platform. It can be set to private within your friends and followers or public. Engagement, this is the interaction that your posts gener generate between you and your followers and, the, and those you're following. Social media have character characteristic. 
There are many characteristics of social media uh, are very much alike, like uh, joinable, easy to understandable, informational, entertaining, aspirational, actionable, fast and creative, educational. This presentation intends to review one of social media applications that has allowed people to interact globally, which is the presentation is considered an instrument of dialogue of transcultural nature, which is a reels in Instagram. Why Instagram? Let's talk about Instagram. Maybe this uh, fact about Instagram, you usually know in uh, kata data, you can see the detail of data about Instagram. Uh, but this is the most important issue. Instagram user globally have reached, um, has reached almost 2 billion people. The majority of Instagram use are those who are 25 uh, until 34 age. And Indonesia have reached almost uh, 60 million Instagram users, which a half are women. Instagram, which initially limited to media for sharing, sharing photos, now it has developed its features by adding chat facility and video sharing. Uh, usually we reels, yeah. That is also linked to other social media like Facebook and Twitter. The development has made Instagram significantly more popular. Real is feature of short video, maximum of 90 seconds on Instagram. Instagram Real has become popular due its relativity easy editing feature compared to camera or other software. The effect facility or filter that is able to make correction of the facial appearance and the AC to use features of sound, graphic, and effect. So Instagram Reels and answer the needs of user. This is a purpose of the user. Um, in identity themselves, building image, establishing their interaction, having entertainment, finding reference, searching knowledge, etc. By way uh, of variety interaction forms, like a clip taken from TV, this one, uh, variety of interactive form of Instagram Reels, clip taken from TV media, animals and nature, documentary, creation of drama scene, slice of life, reality drama, creativity and arts, private and wedding, practical education, clip taken from YouTube, creation of humor scene, and so, so. We talk about uh, the most uh, variety of interactive form like uh, private and wedding, uh, creation of humor scene and uh, slice of life of royalty drama. About the wedding. Wedding celebration, at present, wedding celebration in Indonesia cannot be identif identified anymore as part of particular culture or regional or ethnic tradition. Wedding celebration becomes a personal concept, which depends so much on the week twist on the wish, taste, Dad and financial Johnson. ability of every couple to be married. This one, wedding of baby Sandra. I don't want to see that.
Hey, you know what, Daniel Gene? I don't think I like it one bit. I don't think I like your attitude. Hey, Chad, shut the fuck up. Hey, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you, Chad. Fuck you, dude. I don't want no problems. But you starting the problem. <laughs> I know people, Daniel. I know people. I'll fuck your shit up. Hey, shut up. Hey, fuck you. Fuck you, dude. <laughs> Guys, Daniel, Daniel Jean was like, Stop hitting me. Let me breathe. Okay, for example, wedding celebration with a theme or thematic wedding. Uh, fairy tale about prince and princess are referenced for wedding themes such as the fairy tale of Cinderella, uh, which castle and horse drawn carriage, or the story of Arabian Nights. It is, of course, with modification according to local situation, and the end, uh, we accept it is a novel culture. This is the Cinderella. And uh, another wedding. There are the uh, other forms of the cultural ceremonies, such as uh, throwing flowers, taking off balloons, which are also being adapted in the wedding celebration of the Indonesian people. The other forms are meant to bring in impression of relaxed, warm, and family atmosphere where the bride and the groom mingle together to enjoy the reception by dancing together. This is a tall um, This is another wedding. Maybe this is a member of matching band. You can see another variety uh, about wedding in Instagram. Uh, if you have time, you can see. And uh, this is a pre-wedding photo shoot. At the first, uh, this kind photo uh, only capture a couple of men and women to be presented at the wedding reception as a sign. Photo shoot of the future bride and groom carried out before the wedding days is known as pre-wedding photo session. In the in the traditional wedding ceremony, the Indonesian uh, don't actually have such uh, pre-wedding photos as shown above. Is it not clear how this has started? No pre-wedding photo has turned into social phenomenon. Wedding procession is considered no complete, no complete without wedding photo pre-wedding photo. To compare it to the wedding celebration, pre-wedding photo are more personal. The couple have more freedom to identify themselves in friend. Let's
For example, uh, this Instagram Reels is not just the photos that are shown. It can include as uh, well how the photo shoot is done. It involves interaction between the couple and their photographer completed with other attributes. This is another uh, pre-reading photo shoot. Uh, this is a result. The song is uh, very popular in Instagram Reels. Okay. Uh, personal tastes, hopes, and dreams that are from uh, to be influenced by popular culture or ongoing trend are all captured in the pre-wedding photo. Uh, we can see the uh, different uh, tastes, different uh, style. Diverse forms of culture are randomly mixed together that we cannot tell anymore where those forms come from. However, the situation is not a problem at all since they understand and enjoy it. And even they make a reference, uh, they duplicate uh, product. Another variety is a humor, creation of humor scene. There are so many humor scenes found in Instagram reels. A variety of comedy starting from scene of slapstick nature, meme, memes, riddles, and language game are voiceover. Uh, you see. This is uh, from movie, Korean movie. The scene taken from foreign popular movies are the most used in the voice of Orioles. The scene from Korean film, which is voice over with Japanese language, but with Korean accent. With the support of the filter feature, the heroine of the original film is replaced. A hybridization of Korean culture uh, with Japanese local culture becomes something new. Such practices is very frequently found and it involves Japanese culture mixed with Japanese culture, Korean with Sundanese, and so forth. Uh, this is a Korean television show boy band with the different music or voiceover than the original. And uh, creation of humor scene, uh, another humor is word guessing. Generally, English words have similarity in sound, but their meaning can be different like this. This is serial about father and uh, boy and son.
Anjil. Okay, uh, the slice of life of reality drama, this uh, segment of personal life, families or intermarriage families are often presented in reels. In reels, uh, it describes how their daily life, cultural mix, and how to eat, language, usage, and so forth. They share their experience, knowledge, and effort to adapt the culture shock they are dealing with. This one is a family, ja Javanese and Japan family. Okay, uh, that's a sample for from Instagram reel. The conclusion is uh, we can see uh, from the reels uh, uh, so, uh, so much uh, form, uh, different form. The interaction uh, established in Instagram reels can be considered as transcultural communication by way of cultural hybridity the user go to and go beyond. They don't remain in the middle of the cultural and language boundaries. Uh, you can see the diagram. This is uh, the place, reels is the place, and uh, form A, A, B, C, uh, we call the form, and they uh, habilitize with the process of breaking down boundaries. And this is uh, the culture, transcultural in Instagram. Through real, this user, both the influencers and the followers interact with each other in order to produce and reproduce diverse cultural product. And uh, through the real Instagram reels, we are able to see that transculturation takes place by way of cultural hybridity process. Such cultural mix bring about a new, new cultural form or product. Uh, we can see the language, different language, uh, sound, music, uh, voiceover, and uh, um, text, maybe typograph. And so this is a 
cultural mix yeah. bring about a new culture uh, we don't, we we don't know uh, what the culture is it's not the japanese culture korean culture or indonesian culture that's a real instagram that's a transcultural this slide is a uh, closing for my presentation thank you Thank you, uh, Dr. Indah Cahya Wulan, for that inspiring presentation. It's, give it, it's given me thoughts about how currently the world has become a global village through social media. And it's also a media for interaction, conserving and preserving knowledge through the social media, focusing on the role of Instagram and it has brought the world together. I think that's uh, really inspiring and I'm sure the audience has a lot of questions to ask later on in the Q&A. Please audience, if you have any questions, write it down in the chat box which the committee has provided. Uh, the next speaker, which I am proud to introduce or invite to present his presentation is Rudolfo, straight from uh, Chile. And uh, Rudolfo, I'd like to invite you to Super, I'm here. Your keynote. Uh, oh, you're here. Great, yeah. fantastic. Okay, yeah. I give the floor to you, Rudolfo. Super. Thank you. Thank you all of you to invite me to this amazing experience to connect with you. Here in Chile is almost midnight, but I'm happy for the invitation of Accept to share with you um, my work as creator in many places uh, in Chile, this long country in South America. Uh, but also I would like to share the particularities to create some projects in, in, into the context of creatorship um, after all these uh, turbulence years that we have been living. Um, so I'm, first of all, I'm going to share with you uh, a project uh, that I realized uh, in 2000. 18 and in in that period uh we were living in a very a huge political crisis in chile and i found in the atacama desert the driest desert in the world i found there um a place to reflect with a group of artists but not just with a group of artists also with uh, some cookers some anthropologists some archaeologists, um, dancers too. So um, I'm going to share a few minutes of this video that I think, and then I'm going to continue to explain. So please, can you put the first clip on? <laughs> Can you hear something or because I I can hear the video? Um I think there's no sound. Committee, could you help mm -hmm. putting on the sound? Yes, we are working on it. Please wait. Thank you. Thank you.
but also um, it's important to to focus in these places on the desert because there there are many uh, abandoned places that inspire our practice. So for that reason, it was important to generate these kind of clips to spread the project, but also to generate some dialogues with other places as uh, Denmark or Indonesia, because in this uh, 2018 version, Aseptopan, uh, the professor of Aseptopan participate in this trip to Chile too. Um, I think the sound is not working, <laughs> but uh, maybe I can explain a little more about the project also that I can, uh, I, uh, I, I organize in other places in the desert. So I'm um, not so sure if, if the next one is not going to work with the sound. So the images are very interesting. Perhaps Rodolfo, you could explain while it's running to help us understand the images. Yeah. Well, all this uh, when I, I I I told you a few minutes ago. Most of the places that we visit uh, are abandoned in the desert. Uh, this part of the desert of Tarapacá region in the north of Chile, near the border with Peru and Bolivia, was one of the most important uh, nitrate uh, mining extraction at the mid of the 19th century until uh, the 20th of the 20th century. So this uh, very large epoch of the history of the Atacama Desert generate a lot of uh, towns, generate a lot of uh, new harbors that, uh, uh, that feed a lot of uh, towns in other places in Chile. So the, the mining companies of Nitrate collapsed because in Europe discover a uh, fake Nitrate and all these places were abandoned uh, during the first half of the 20th century. And we visit those places also as a as an act of like a like a like a religious uh, path to connect with the ancestors, to connect with all these tales that appear in the middle of the desert. Most of them are unknown are still unknown for the Chilean culture. So in that way, it's really important to generate these talks uh, into the desert, walking, uh, walking several kilometers uh, under a very <laughs> a tough sun, but at the same time thinking that this, uh, this desert is a tool to connect uh, not just with our thoughts, it's also to connect with our body. Because in, 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 I think in the, in the, in the curate, curatorial practices, most of the time we are super worried about the text. We are super worried about the way to exhibit, but we are not worried about how our body is connected with the earth. And in a, in a, in a, in a world in crisis, and uh, we have to we have to accept the crisis, and 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 to accept the crisis most of the time, uh, the desert is a place to evoke new futures and new futures with the same crisis, but maybe with with a with a with a with a soft crisis that we can accept constantly, because the 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 nitrate collapsed. Uh, at the beginning of the 20th century, but after Nitrate, uh, the some some European empires invest in another uh, commodities as as copper, as lithium, as iodine, uh, as also salt. So it's important to 
uh, remarked that the desert is still a place to 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 destructivism. So it's the place also of extra destructivism, and it's important to uh, recover uh, one part of the desert to generate these kind of practices. Also, uh, thinking that we don't have any school of art in the desert, uh, from from the capital city of Santiago to Atacama Desert, we have two thousand kilometers uh, long. <laughs> And it's really tough to generate new thoughts about curatorial issues, uh, despite all these uh, contradictions in the way that Chile, as a state uh, in South America, uh, analyze and invest in visual culture uh, nowadays. So I convinced myself that these uh, that these issues about to generate curatorial projects is not just to generate exhibition; it's also to generate these research trips that help us. Uh, uh, I, this is I, this is a super strong uh, way also to help us to uh, spread the artists, but also express, spread new ideas to protect the sustainability of the desert, the way that people also want to live. Because I think nitrate and, and bird dropping, that it's very well known in Asia, the bird dropping that the, that the English empire used uh, at the middle of the 19th century to, to, to use as a, a fertilizer in the agricultural fields in England. Um, after that, uh, Europe supposed to to the all the 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 extraction process in Latin America uh, was a, a very huge end. But now we can confirm mm -hmm. that this uh, extraction is endless in terms of of. Uh, globalization in terms of neoliberalism, also focusing in a in Chile as a country where uh, the neoliberalism system put the first stone in Latin America. So in that way, uh, to see these abandoned places to uh, um, recover the idea that our body is. Uh, a tool of knowledge is important uh, to join uh, with this group of artists. It's important to to dialogue um, in these places that uh, you know, like uh, reflect how this globalization affects some territories that sometimes appears. Uh, to um, appears as 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 um as a as a site that belongs to others others ones and not to the places that you are seeing at first. So uh, the this uh, video that we uh, I showed recently is the the a very big project that I produced during fourteen years called managing managing new displacements from geography and also this project was a, a very important issue in the virtual uh, arts national policy uh, because it was a, a new issue to accept that it's impossible for the Chilean state to invest every time in museums and in some uh, school of arts uh, because there is no way to spread in in under this educational system a uh, new school of arts or, or or design. So the the project itself was a very important issue to generate new path and new ways to uh, know and to be in touch with 
uh, a contemporary artists, contemporary thinkers. Um, also because the, the, the history of Chile, the, the contemporary history of Chile also is, is really is really tough as, as many countries in Latin America and Asia and Europe and Africa in terms of a new colonization, but the, the, the inner colonization in Chile was super uh, violent. And in that way, uh, now we have some hopes in terms to uh, find out new uh, alternatives to generate these talks and, 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 and new speeches about uh, what's going on with our way to uh, study uh, curatorial projects, but also with the way that how we can think in future curatorial projects. Um, I think we have a lot of uh, a lot of challenge uh, in terms of that, but also I think, uh, and, it, and and this is very important. I think all the time that we can evoke from those geographies, especially in the desert and in Patagonia, in the southern part of America, we can evoke uh, new uh, perspectives of uh, um, of a, of a, of, a, of a new perspective in, under new cosmovision uh, and how this cosmovision are um, um, a link to territorialities because it's not just to speak about territory it's also about uh, it's also speak about territorialities how uh, communities are affected by the global crisis but also how these communities are affected by uh, the new uh, epistemology epistemology uh, so um we are working very hard now to maybe um, change some ways to generate this project in the future. Uh, but in the meantime, I think um, I, I want to share with you some examples of all this because uh, you in Indonesia, you don't have this kind of landscape as the desert is. Uh, but at the same time, I think we in in this in this way to to create the 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 research trips. Also, we can do some parallels with other places, mm -hmm. and in that way, I think it's important how these connections appears uh, nowadays. Because uh, I think uh, we uh, have been living in a in a turbulent world, mm -hmm. and and most of the time, our our way to work is into the turbulence. Mm -hmm. And I but but turbulence. but at the end, it's important to 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 share how we can create these projects uh, in the future too. Oh, that's wonderful, uh, Rudolfo. Do you think uh, it would be possible or? Uh, for the committee to try to to re uh, play your videos with the yes. sound committee, maybe I, mm -hmm. maybe I can share uh, I can share the video in here because it's much better. Let me check. Um, You can see the... Yes, we can see. Yeah. Can you hear? Mm. In the first instance, it's important to put in relief capitalism. We can hear it now. ...has come in a cultural construction. It's important to evidence this fact, because we are not only referring to the economy of the economy, sino también a sus efectos como construcción cultural bien integrada. Well, this project, uh, I, I, can you hear me, right? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah. Super. Well, this, 
this project was an encounter of photographers in the middle of a abandoned place in, in, in Atacama Desert too. This place is called Inca de Oro. And Inca de Oro, it's a, a Quechua name. Uh, the Quechua language is the language of the Inca Empire that, you know, like the Inca Empire was uh, a huge empire that uh, fight against the new uh, conquerors, uh, well, such as Spanish ones. So Inca de Oro, it's a, a, a very old place in the desert and it's super connected with the extractivism of, of some minerals, especially copper. But nowadays it's a place to, um, to looking for some uh, gold mines. So we visit this place with a group of photographers, but also we join with a group of filmmakers, uh, poets, writers, and and some uh, musicians too. And for sure, this uh, uh, this research trip was a kind of reality show because the town was super abandoned. We don't have any place to uh, accommodate us and also any place to, to feed us. So we have to rent an abandoned place and to clean, clean them up, all the things inside to stay there. So this uh, third photography uh, encounter uh, was totally different from this encounter inside an exhibition places. So in that way, uh, these people invite me regularly to these territories to generate like a, another uh, exit to see what's going on with the when a, with an alternative uh, way to 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 work. El territorio recita los versos que le enseña la geografía. Pese a ello, el ser humano intenta afanosamente reescribir estos versos con la finalidad de confirmar su hegemonía. Esto lo evidenciamos al comenzar nuestra silenciosa caminata por los alrededores de Inca de Oro. Una acción que renovó la forma en la que observamos estos rincones donde el desierto es un poema incorregible. Cómo realizar esta actividad que es un viaje de exploración en donde reunimos a fotógrafos, artistas visuales, well, poetas, cineastas. As you can see, um, I create this kind of flag that is a the regular white flag that in in many places represent uh, a state of peace, right? But I use the white flag also. As a, as a book note. So each participant uh, has to write some thoughts about this walking into the nowhere in the middle of the desert. And was really excited because uh, in, in, in that way of, in that way of extractivism is sometimes the body have to uh, take a hand uh, a piece of flag, and especially a piece of white flag, is like a, a metaphor to uh, get the permission of the earth, get the permission of as the indigenous called Pachamama, that is the mother earth. So was uh, really interesting how the, these uh, people in, in, in inside the project uh, commitment and, and have the confidence with me to walk with this uh, white flag. Para reflexionar, para crear, para hacer nuevos procesos artísticos. El simple acto de envolvernos con las energías que transmitió este trabajo de desplazamiento proyecta en la bandera de los participantes nuevos imaginarios. Sin duda, estas banderas fueron transformadas en herramientas 
que retratar la forma abrupta en que brotan nuestros pensamientos. So the flags are tools also, are tools that invite us to think eh, in about those landscape, but at the same time, how we can uh, create, uh, because most of the time uh, in, in, in some places, including Indonesia, uh, the curatorial aspects are ruling by some exhibitions, some biennale structures. And I think uh, it's difficult to find in some places also in Latin America and, and in Europe, places that uh, accept that the, the, the landscape and the territories and territorialities are new ways to uh, analyze our practice, but not just the, the contemporary visual art practice, it's also to understand how all the practices uh, in the artistic, in the artistic uh, atmosphere can collaborate with uh, the creation of, of a lot of artists. Mm -hmm. uh, how long I, I got from now? You still have uh, time, Rudolfo, mm -hmm. quite a lot. Okay. <laughs> Take your time. Uh, so uh, in this um, in this project was really interesting to invite uh, a lot of people from Latin America because we were reflecting about the uh, the lack of places to create projects and to show projects in 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 the in. Uh, through the desert and into some cities, especially because most of the cities in the desert are really in touch, uh, in touch with the mining companies, very big companies, international companies. So there you can find a lot of, of resources, uh, money resources to invest in culture, but they decide not, uh, not investment uh, not generate this in, in, this is this investment in in culture, they just invest in in some places out of the desert uh, and out of the desert because maybe uh, they 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 are not um, they are not generating the reflection in the places that they are affecting at the same time. So in that way, we uh, join with a, a more than thirty five. Uh, cultural managers, creators, visual artists, uh, people from from uh, from theater and from 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 poetry too, and we discuss with some uh, uh, professors of the university and, and and intellectuals and philosophers the way that we can establish. Uh, a new uh, a new uh, commitment with the visual art culture in the desert. So we discuss a lot. We 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 generate a kind of seminar, but a, a moving seminar because also in you can see these images when we discussing inside a old house in 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 a in a important city, but also we move to other places to reflect about archaeology, about, uh, about some uh, religious festival that are really important to uh, generate a comprehension about uh, how the lifetime uh, it's on in the desert. So I'm going to show some images about this too. Temático del centro, y ahí hay afinidad, ahí hay una construcción de y ahí, y ahí hay actores locales. Y todos los temas que ustedes están mencionando en cuanto a la, quizás a la homogeneización de una posible identidad de un paisaje chileno o de, de esos temas, eh, yo pensaba todo el tiempo, no, no puedo evitar como quizás comparar con lo que es Argentina, eh, que hay, un muchísimo, hay una brecha muchísimo más grande de, de desconocimiento, 
en cuanto a las escenas que se, que se dan eh, muy activamente en otras provincias. Es algo que está resurgiendo y para resurgir necesita que sus relaciones con su contexto, con su comunidad y con su gente sean lazos reales y efectivos. Entonces el arte se transforma en un dispositivo de reconocimiento de lo que está instalado y de lo que se está discutiendo. Este espacio donde es como una cavidad sonora donde suena aún más y resuena aún más el silencio en un paisaje eh, como, como este eh, que es, es abismante. Para mí, durante el, el camino que hicimos, estuve pensando mucho en la relación que tiene que haber tenido las personas presas en este entorno natural. Porque, bueno, hay un, un contraste evidente, porque el paisaje un paisaje uh -huh. desértico, un paisaje de reconciliación con uno mismo, la costa, el mar, que tiene igual un abrimiento, entonces ese tipo de contraste no se puede, claramente son experiencias vivenciales que uno no se puede poner en, eso, en, en el lugar del otro, porque no, no lo podemos imaginar. Como que uno construye desde de, de la memoria de un país y de lo trágico que, que, que ha sido, que fue y que va a ser este episodio complejo de la historia chilena, entonces como que un paisaje como que se construye quizá con, con los ojos cerrados, como de, es como de, de, de memoria. Me he pasado mucho una cosa entre, que ya es una cosa más humana, entre la presencia y la ausencia. Es si es una cosa que me pasa con este edificio que está atrás nuestro que sigue permaneciendo, a pesar de lo deteriorado que está, sigue teniendo una impronta, una actitud de establecerse en este territorio, pero al estar tan desgastado por fuera, también, y también desgastado por dentro, me, me, me da la sensación de una fachada, de una, de una cáscara de algo, de, de que aquí ocurrió algo y que ya esa, esas cosas salieron por las ventanas volando, totalmente permeable, a pesar de su, obviamente potencia arquitectónica y, y, y enfrentamiento con el mar. Bueno, uh, all these places uh, uh, are connected also with the contemporary history of Chile in terms of the Pinochet dictatorship. Uh, so as explained you, we visit some remarkable archaeology sites too that represent the uh, importance of these sites as a as a places of reflection like uh, this uh, anthropo archaeology sites that is very famous now in chile that calls uh, the giant of tarabaca that it's a uh, geoglyphs made in 1000 years uh, ago in the middle of nowhere but it's a site it's a site of 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 a territory uh, a, a territory very very in touch with the income empire so um this managing new displacement of geography was uh, a super important experience in my creator career uh, because now i am um, i'm producing some Uh, research trips also in Canada, in Mexico, Spain, and also in Colombia with, mm -hmm. the, with some universities, but also with some uh, exhibition places because they um, have uh, they have understood that it's important uh, not invest just in exhibitions. It's, it's also important to connect ideas and to create mm -hmm. some ideas uh, from the territories mm. so um I, i i have more time or, or, or i'm all right um well the last speaker apparently i regret to inform the audience 
uh, could not make it because force the major. So please, Rudolfo, if you still have some material to share, uh, you can. But if you would prefer to go on to the Q&A, it's up to you. Do you still have something to share? Um, I think I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I think uh, because the, I, I, I'm, I'm supposed that the sound is going to work, but I think mm -hmm. it was uh, kind of tough, but um, maybe um, I can wait for the Q&A. Uh, all right, all right. Thank you so much, Rudolfo, for your wonderful presentation. It's quite inspiring to see how creatorship uh, as surviving and uh, moving towards a place of process and reflection in research. And uh, I think nowadays a place of quiet is, is needed because, the, because of technology, our minds are full of uh, babble and sound. And uh, a place to reflect is something quite very vital in today's world. And a transdisciplinary uh, meeting between artists, archaeologists, anthropologists is quite inspiring for us in Indonesia. It comes to mind in Indonesia uh, connected to mining mining sites. We have one in Sawalunto in West Sumatra, the Umbilin, if I'm, if I'm correct, uh, is, has uh, shifted from an old mining space museum and has now also become a place for uh, performances. But uh, your explanation of how uh, site-specific places for curatorship and in quite a challenging terrain, if I may, may add, your, your, your team is very brave to venture in such a challenging terrain and reconnecting with past stories, uh, past glories uh, with the Inca, Inca epics in that place is quite impressive according to my my own uh, opinion okay uh, audience i think uh, our two speakers have already presented their keynotes and their uh, thoughts on their respective researches i would like to invite anyone to ask questions kalau ada yang ingin menanyakan dalam bahasa Indonesia dan membutuhkan diterjemahkan, saya akan bantu. Silakan. Mungkin apakah panitia apakah ada pertanyaan? Are there any questions in the chat box? Or would Masih belum ada bu. There's not yet any questions. Okay, would or perhaps someone would like to ask directly to the speakers? Okay, if there are yet to be, maybe everyone is thinking, usually Indonesians, they need a trigger for someone else to ask first, <laughs> they will ask. I'd like to ask, uh, first of all, to Dr. Indah Cahaya Wulan. Your presentation is very inspiring, connected to today's technology. And uh, the world has become a global village and uh, everyone has access to technology to create something with their own personal agenda. And um, apakah ada, uh, do you think Ibu Indah, there is a possibility for uh, this to become increasingly 
accessible or uh, or building up more creative spaces on the Instagram in today's world because your statistics were quite impressive are the 2 billion people using Instagram. Jadi uh, pendapat Ibu Indah apa mengenai hal ini? Silakan Ibu. Saya jawab pakai bahasa ya Bu Dira ya. Ya. ya ini ya. audiensnya kayaknya kebanyakan Indonesia ya. Iya, sepertinya. Ya, uh, kalau kita melihat perkembangan teknologi, sebetulnya Instagram itu mulanya kan hanya bisa foto ya. Kemudian sekarang bisa chat dan ada video real study. Mm -hmm. Jadi kalau misalnya kreativitas pasti itu berkembangnya sesuai dengan adanya teknologi tadi. Saya nggak tahu ya, lima tahun lagi Instagram apakah masih ada atau malah justru ada apa lagi gitu yang bisa di apa berkembang maksudnya ada yang bisa ditambahkan lagi di fiturnya ya nah fitur itu tentu akan mem membuat kreativitas semakin banyak gitu kemudahan kemudahan dan aplikasi aplikasi yang bisa nyambung ke fitur tersebut sekarang ini kan banyak filter dan segala macam yang nyambung gitu ke uh, Instagram real tadi sehingga semua orang bisa bikin bisa bikin apa aja gitu gitu sih jawabannya mudah-mudahan ya. bisa dipahami ya baik uh, sambil masih menunggu pertanyaan yang belum uh, silakan ya kalau ada yang ingin tanya uh, langsung saja merespon Ibu Indah uh, berhubungan dengan artificial intelligence itu di dunia sosmed apakah mungkin akan ada Uh, perkembangan koneksi ke masyarakat publik biasa atau itu memang masih eksklusif? Uh, kelihatannya sekarang aplikasinya ada yang sudah itu ya. Jadi uh, saya nggak tahu nih nanti orang bisa maksudnya yang sekarang ini kan kita kan masih apalagi seni rupa gitu ya seni rupa itu kan kita masih dituntut untuk bisa menggambar gitu ya dengan baik dengan tangan kita sendiri ya tentu dibantu terus tapi artif, artificial intelligence itu udah bisa <laughs> bikin ini sendiri gitu nah itu nanti keseni rupa seperti apa kita mesti lihat tuh <laughs> karena <laughs> sekolah juga mesti gimana itu ngadepinnya dengan mudahnya gitu pakai aplikasi mau gambar orang kaya apapun sekarang udah kelihatan kan udah bisa gitu kita punya foto bisa diapain aja gitu tapi nanti mungkin bisa mereka bisa bikin dari scratch gitu dari awal gitu bukan bukan hanya mengubah bentuk gitu. nah itu ya ke depan ya bisa jadi pemikiran kita lah mau gimana gitu ya yeah, yeah. thank you ibu indah And um, the next question is addressed to Rudolfo from the audience. Uh, who asked, would you like to... Okay, the question is, to what extent is your project related to the indigenous struggle in South American context? Jadi pertanyaannya adalah sejauh apa proyek Anda berhubungan dengan perjuangan masyarakat pribumi di dalam konteks uh, Amerika Selatan. Yeah. Please, Rudolfo. Uh, well, thank you for the for this uh, remarkable question, because also we have been living in a very huge struggle uh, in the way of the indigenous cosmovision. So I'm um, convinced myself at first that in any project that I've been working in i need to uh, put in in context with some indigenous uh, that that help us to understand uh, their struggles but at the same time they they share with us the way that they can understand their lifetime in in into their territories but at the same time how the indigenous uh, cosmovision uh, As, as equals a world in indigenous world uh, assume 
uh, this kind of crisis, especially the political crisis, because we have to remember that indigenous, uh, uh, especially in the, in, in, in the southern part of, of Chile, mm -hmm. uh, were killed by some uh, European communities at the end of 18th century and, and, and the beginning of the 19th century. Mm -hmm. And this uh, um, uh, sad history repeat again in at the beginning of this century. So uh, most of the time we uh, um, question ourselves if we are doing our best job to hear the new voices of indigenous in our territories and how as creator we have the responsibility uh, to connect the communities with these kind of projects too. In that way, for sure, uh, I'm not indigenous, but but I'm super in touch with the Andean communities, uh, mm. especially in Peru, Bolivia, Paraguay, mm. and 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 the north of Chile. Mm -hmm. um, Please way, allow me to translate a little bit, Rudolfo. Yeah. Sorry. I'd like to translate for the <laughs> audience <laughs> because the majority uh, speak in Indonesian. Ya, Rudolfo mengatakan terima kasih untuk pertanyaannya. Uh, terima dalam semua proyek yang saya lakukan, uh, saya berusaha untuk tetap memperjuangkan aspirasi masyarakat asli dan bagaimana bisa mengangkat kosmovision dalam dunia mereka dalam krisis politik khususnya di Chile dan bagaimana mereka uh, berjuang untuk bertahan dan berlawanan dengan uh, kekuasaan atau relasi kuasa Erko Eropa sentrik. Jadi saya selalu berusaha bertanya kepada diri saya sendiri, uh, bagaimana dalam proyek-proyek kuratorial kita tetap bisa mengangkat suara-suara masyarakat pribumi dalam hal ini tradisi ya di dalam uh, semua proyek-proyek uh, saya sehingga bisa semua orang bisa mendengarkan suara-suara baru dan aspirasi baru dari mereka. Ya. Yeah. Would you like to continue, Rudolfo? Yeah. Um, well, uh, I think um, the political crisis that we live at the end of 19, so 2019 in Chile and also in some countries in, in South America, uh, the indigenous uh, statement, the current indigenous statement, uh, help us also to understand our relationship with indigenous in this uh, political crisis atmosphere. So um, I repeat again, I, I think we as curators uh, living in touch with these communities, especially at the Andean communities uh, that are really in touch with indigenous cosmovision, we have the responsibility to uh, link with them, to hear them, to uh, dialogue with them, to uh, maybe to take new epistemologies about, especially about our relationship with them, because uh, we have to be responsible in the way that our indigenous culture are still surviving. Mm -hmm. um, uh, against you know these um, states that sometimes are blind, are are mute, uh, uh, facing them. Yeah, I will translate your answer. Jadi di dalam uh, Rudolfo melanjutkan bahwa di dalam beberapa negara. Uh, masyarakat tradisi atau indigenous yang sekarang pernyataan-pernyataan uh, mereka membantu kami untuk memahami agar kita tetap bisa bersentuhan dan bertanggung jawab uh, kepada eh, dan mengambil atau mengangkat suatu epistemologi baru mengenai hubungan dan relasi mereka dan cara mereka bertahan terhadap pihak-pihak uh, berkuasa yang mungkin 
masih buta dan tuli terhadap uh, perjuangan dan aspirasi mereka. Okay, thank you, Rudolfo. There is another question here. Ada pertanyaan baru, but I'm not sure who it is addressed to. It is from Nita Trismaya. Uh, selamat pagi, izin bertanya. Berkaitan dengan masyarakat Indonesia yang heterogenitas, kebudayaan kita sendiri tercipta dan terproses melalui akulturasi dan asimilasi dengan budaya luar dalam perkembangan sejarahnya. Bagaimanakah orang Indonesia dapat bertahan atau berproses dengan identitas lokalnya yang cair, dinamis, dan heterogen tanpa kehilangan jati dirinya dalam dunia global. Terima kasih. So this next question is from Nita Trismaya. She says, good morning. I'd like to ask a question connected to the Indonesian community who is a heterogonic. Our, cult, our own culture has been created and processed through acculturation assimilated with Uh, outside cultures in their own development if we see our history. So the question is, how do us as Indonesians can sustain and endeavor to commit to the process with our local identity uh, who is becoming more fluid? I think she's Uh, it's concerning the movement of Indonesia's outside side their traditional boundaries and becoming diaspora, which is dynamic and heterogon without losing our identity of self in this global dynamics in the world. Yeah, mungkin, I think this is addressed to Ibu Indah and Rudolfo because uh, It's quite a general question. Silakan Ibu Indah mungkin bisa merespon. Ya, yeah. um, kalau bicaranya soal transkulturasi sih memang uh, tadi saya sudah jelaskan juga bahwa uh, yang namanya ini kan berarti hibrid ya, hibridasi ya. Yang namanya budaya itu berbagai macam nyampur jadi satu tadi kan ada ada bisa secara gradual itu bisa sangat eh, sangat apa ya sangat tinggi atau sangat rendah artinya kalau kita tidak bisa mengatakan bahwa Indonesia eh, tanpa kehilangan jati dirinya dalam dunia global eh, kalau sudah bilangnya global itu udah nggak bisa ngomong jati diri sih <laughs> karena udah udah ini baru gitu muncul yang baru bahwa mungkin masih ada jejak masih ada jejak yang lebih lebih apa ya lebih banyak gitu atau lebih kelihatan tapi ada juga yang sama sekali hilang biasanya seperti itu kalau kita kan ngelihat produk hasil akhir ya produknya jadi kalau bicaranya transkultur ya seperti itu tapi e, sebetulnya kan kalau kita meng, kalau pakai terminologi lain ada budaya-budaya yang sebetulnya dicampur tapi masih nggak nyampur gitu sebetulnya disatukan tapi masih terpisah-pisah itu ada masih kelihatan nah e, mungkin kita bisa ngelihat juga ada ada beberapa produk yang kelihatannya seperti itu kayak e, dipertahankan lah masih dipertahankan e, ciri lokalnya kemudian e, dilemparkan ke global gitu tapi itu menurut saya sih bukan transkultur ya Jadi kalau bagaimana caranya bertahan, ya sekarang ini cara bertahannya itu kan memang tadi ya pakai apa sih akulturasi, asimilasi, kita masih melihat, melihat jejaknya. Itu sih dari saya jawabannya. Ya, terima kasih Bu Indah. Uh, Rudolfo, would you like to respond to the question? Um, uh, I don't understand so much the question in general, but hmm. I I think maybe I can say that um, well I don't know Indonesia I've been I've been several times in Asia but I never been to Indonesia oh. but I think there is a lot of uh, there's a lot of territories uh, around the world that are occurring the same mm. in the way of acculturation and in the way of syncretism I think we have a work to do in the way of creatorship 
because uh, most of the time we uh, receive uh, European education in terms of creatorship. Mm -hmm. And most of this uh, European education is in terms of syncretism, is in terms of to uh, impose one way to another. And I think uh, in Latin America, most of the time we are inspired, but uh, we are super inspired about the indigenous communities that most of them are creating acculturation processes. Because also the word syncretism is most of the time used by the Catholic uh, uh, religion. And now with the new way to see uh, our uh, communities after COVID, I think it's important to uh, revitalize the word acculturation because also acculturation it's a, a, a complex process to understand identities in our countries but at the same time acculturation it's uh it's a a, a, a concept that rescue a lot of uh, ideas indigenous ideas that still exist we know that that our identities move uh, round and round every time, but it's important to analyze that identities are mixing, identities are trans identities nowadays. Mm -hmm. Identities are the way that we can share our experience and to define ourselves, our identity, because national identity is really a old fashion to discuss nowadays. So I got the hopes that the new generation uh, in these territories in Latin America, especially in South America, in this Andean zone that connect almost seven countries as Colombia, such as Colombia, Bolivia, Peru, Ecuador, uh, Argentina, Chile, uh, is also a, a, like, a, like a line of new knowledge to understand that acculturation as concept is a new uh, is a new uh, maybe um, cosmovision to understand us to hear us and to spread uh, this idea that the identity is not uh, the 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 flag of our country or the national anthem is more than that it's complex to define identity in our Andean cultures, especially. And I can say uh, without, um, um, without uh, having so much information about Indonesia, but maybe in Indonesia, of course, the same, mm -hmm. um, all these island fragments, islands on the sea, also are as a metaphor that the Indonesian identity belongs to thousands of identity at the same time. So it's super complex to define identity. But for that reason, I really love to use acculturation because acculturation is a way also to respect another identities at the same time. I hope to, to answer. No, no, uh, I've written it down so I can help uh, the audience by translating. Yeah, uh, Bapak Ibu Stalian. <laughs> Sebagaimana Pak Rudolfo sudah katakan, uh, Indone di, beliau ini belum pernah ke Indonesia. Namun menanggapi pertanyaan tadi, ya Indonesia merupakan salah satu bangsa di dunia dan melalui akulturasi, sinkretism, uh, kita semua telah menerima uh, budaya Eropa yang diimpos ya, yang di yang diberikan kepada uh, masyarakat tradisi atau primo bumi yang di mana di Latin Amerika di mana beliau berasal salah satu yang menjadi media untuk ini adalah agama Katolik. Nah, setelah masa Covid menurut pendapatnya kita perlu uh, menggunakan kembali atau mencari cara baru untuk 
menggunakan uh, akulturasi di dunia untuk menyelamatkan identitas-identitas indigenous atau identitas masyarakat tradisi atau masyarakat asli yang masih ada. Dan kita bisa lihat bahwa sekarang identitas sudah bercampur, sudah trans ya, dan uh, kita sendiri perlu masing-masing me- de- mendefinisi ulang identitas kita masing-masing sebagai individu maupun sebagai bangsa dalam suatu uh, bunyi atau ambient sound ya satu echo ya satu ambient yang dapat kita dengarkan jadi uh, dari suatu lanskap atau paparan dari akulturasi baru ini merupakan suatu konsep untuk memahami, melihat, dan mendengar kompleksitas dan untuk mem- pemahaman baru akan persoalan identitas ini sendiri. Mungkin contohnya seperti di Indonesia, da- Indonesia merupakan satu identitas, tetapi melekat dengan seribu identitas sendiri yang uh, sangat kompleks. Uh, begitu kira-kira tanggapan dari uh, Mas Rudolfo. <laughs> ya. Uh, baik, saya rasa masih ada waktu hanya sedikit ya. Mungkin ada satu pertanyaan lagi. Uh, oh ya, yeah. there is a one response and I don't think it's a question but... Uh, In my opinion, we should not be worried about losing our identity because in our history, it has always been cross-cultural, always been a hybrid long before the European came, like influences from China, India, Muslim, and still we produce a hybrid culture that is rich in content and form. Uh, that is not a question, but uh, an opinion by an oh, Ibu Ananda Mursid, our esteemed and beloved teacher in the Jakarta Institute of Arts. Thank you, Ibu Ananda. Would you like to uh, directly communicate, or is this question uh, read by myself uh, enough, Ibu Ananda? Yeah, I'm still unmuted or like what? I can hear you, Ibu Ananda, please. Can, can you hear or no? We can hear you. We can hear you. Can you hear can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, we can hear you, Ibu Ananda, please. Uh-oh. Bisa Ibu yeah. kita bisa dengar? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sekarang sekarang kedengaran masih? Ya, yeah, kedengaran. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah, because uh Our culture, be it uh, be it in the performing arts or the um, everyday life, or also and also the all the artifacts, it's it still has some uh, some. How do you say it? It has always been a cross cultural and sometimes is a hybrid, <clears throat> but. What I'm saying is we don't have to worry about that because we have the um, <clears throat> we have the how do you say it in Indonesia? I say kemampuan. We have the ability to uh, absorb it and then give birth to another culture, another new one. That's what. Yeah, I think that that's all. Yeah, thank you, Ibu Dr. Ananda Mursid. And perhaps, uh, would you like to, Ibu Inda, would you like to respond or Rudolfo, <coughs> Ibu Ananda? A short response, if you would like to. Yeah, I think I agree with 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 Ananda. But uh, I repeat again that it's uh, quite difficult to to define identities nowadays in in several countries. Uh, we we uh, we are living in in, in multi-colonial zones 
in many places uh, mm -hmm. may, and are multi-colonial zones or multi-colonial sites as, as you can mention uh, mm -hmm. because the world it's moving all the time now in South America we have a very big uh, migration crisis uh, and this migration crisis is not just from people inside South America it's also from people from Pakistan from India that arrived to South America uh, to looking for a new life and for sure these new uh, <coughs> neighbors uh, uh, support the these local identities but also supply local identities but at the same time reinforce a uh, in rich local identities. So in that way, I, I, I live and I was born in a city called Iquique. And Iquique is <laughs> a, a, an immigration site from, from several uh, centuries ago. So in that way, I think uh, my, my, maybe my, 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 I question myself if if as, as these uh, countries, uh, uh, very big countries as Indonesia is, uh, and all other ones, uh, we can find the uh, a unique identity, and we can find and just uh, well to define from the state's uh, national policy that uh, uh, recognize more than one identity, and I think that is a big issue that we have now in Chile. Uh, to analyze new ways to generate constitution, for example, and in in that way, uh, uh, most of the time they never ask to indigenous community, for example, to uh, generate opinion about new constitution, and and that is uh, and that is a, a very big argue because also to uh, when the countries decides to generate constitution. They also are doing an act to define themselves as a, a, a unique identity, and, and that way I think we have to be aware to to looking for uh, another ways to define these problems that appears in our communities and territories, because the 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 I think the the the, the COVID crisis open political and territorial crisis too. And I think that um, it's something that we are, that we, we have to learn to live for, for many years from now, for example. Yes, uh, very interesting from your side, uh, Rudolfo. I totally agree that uh, your struggle and endeavor to for uh, new constitutions to address the local identities to be quite important. For example, in Indonesia, we have we have a constitution on undang-undang pemajuan kebudaya, cultural empowerment of the oral traditions of the local communities. So our local communities are uh, acknowledged by our government and there are a lot of uh, endeavors to empower the local identity and but we have also learned uh, from your activism to to rebalance the uh, relation of local identity and uh, the empowerment of local indigenous community from your projects. Wonderful. Ya, Ibu Indah, mungkin ada respon? Ya, yeah. uh, terima kasih, Ibu Dira. Uh, ya, yeah, uh, betul bahwa kalau uh, tadi yang ngomong, yang dikatakan Ibu Nanda, uh, kita punya kemampuan. Uh, tapi jangan lupa juga, uh, sekarang kan media itu sangat masif ya. Jadi, misalnya pemerintah punya kebijakan uh, tadi, kemajuan budaya, terus ada uh, masyarakat adat lokal yang kemudian mengangkat uh, kelokalan itu, tetapi uh, disampaikannya ke lewat mana gitu, kalau tidak diperbincangkan di media, jadinya juga menurut saya tidak akan berhasil gitu kenapa uh, 
seperti Korea, Jepang dan uh, itu tuh dia bisa mem, apa penetrasinya sangat luas gitu, sangat, bisa mengglobal karena apa? Karena dia kuat di sana gitu. Jadi jadi memang uh, makanan budaya-budaya apapun gitu yang ada disampaikan itu lewat media gitu. Di sebetulnya yang sekarang ini media mudah sekali gitu untuk untuk disampaikan secara massal gitu ya. Jadi eh uh, menurut saya oke okay, produksi ya, produksi budaya itu mengangkat kelokalan itu penting, tapi distribusinya juga perlu gitu supaya apa? Supaya bisa dikonsumsi dan bisa tadi mendunia gitu mengglobal. Itu dari saya Mbak Tira. Terima kasih. Ya. Terima kasih Bu Indah. Uh, I just I don't think I should translate for Rudolfo because um but well she saying actually the same as you Rudolfo but about the importance of the indigenous communities masyarakat adat and the local communities but uh it's they are still to yet to be massively dialogued in the social media so actually it's still a struggle and an endeavor to be pushed and to empower the local communities and the local identities in a massive effort to bring up and uh, the thought is to distribute these conversations and dialogues across the boundaries so more uh, more attention and massively uh, a massive act across borders and across communities to bring uh, attention and concern to the world on what our own concern is about our local identities and um i think the uh okay our time is up and i will thank you dr indah cahya wulan our esteemed keynote speaker our rector our beloved rector from the jakarta institute of arts and rudolfo from chile thank you for your time and it's so inspiring I, uh, I, think, I really hope you can come one day to Indonesia so we can bring a direct dialogue between uh, Indonesia and you from Chile. And uh, to sum up uh, our, I hope I can rise to the occasion to give a summary of our two speakers. Uh, I will, saya akan memberikan kesimpulan in bahasa Indonesia. Jadi meng, untuk mengingat kembali, Ibu Indah menyampaikan bagaimana praktek-praktek uh, budaya global itu menjadi suatu ideologi baru, bagaimana berinteraksi, mempengaruhi, dan menciptakan konteks-konteks baru, meminjam, mencampur, dan mencipta ulang mereka cipta melalui sosial media, khususnya Instagram, untuk mentransformasi dialog kultural, untuk menjadi semakin cair, dan uh, dalam kehidupan kita sehari-hari menggunakan teknologi yang terkini dan yang terbaru sebagai suatu respon untuk isu-isu uh, budaya yang paling terakhir, yang terkini, lintas batasan-batasan dan melampaui perbedaan-perbedaan. Seperti itu, dan uh, yang dari Pak Rudolfo tadi untuk mengulang saja uh, dia menceritakan bagaimana kuratorship uh, setelah telah berkembang dalam uh, setelah masa-masa yang penuh krisis terakhir ini dia mencari suatu tempat untuk merefleksi suatu pertemuan bersama di antara seniman penari para arkeolog antropolog uh, dan itu mencari tempat-tempat yang memaksa kita untuk diam berefleksi dan mencari tempat di uh, di tempat-tempat yang seperti gurun ya untuk menggenerasi dialog-dialog baru kita um, dia mencari koneksi baru dengan kisah-kisah yang lama untuk uh, menciptakan kisah-kisah yang baru dan juga agar bisa mengkoneksi diri dan tubuh kita 
melalui uh, melampaui suatu kondisi dunia yang telah melewati semacam krisis ya. Dan dia harapannya adalah uh, proses kuratorial itu bukan saja untuk menyelenggarakan eksibisi akan tetapi juga untuk mengekstraksi ya, menggali praktek-praktek baru dan dia berharap bahwa bisa uh, tercipta suatu sekolah seni di daerah Purun Pasir khususnya di Cile. Ya, itu demikian uh, kira-kira singkatnya dari kesimpulan hari ini. Uh, terima kasih Bapak Ibu semua yang telah hadir hingga sesi ini selesai. And I'd like to thank the audience that uh, has asked the questions for today's session. And uh, that is my closing statement and summary of today's session. I would now like to ask our most respected Dean, Bapak Anindit Anindyo Wadito, to give uh, an e-certificate for our esteemed keynote speakers. Bapak Dito, silakan. Okay, thank you very much, Ibu Dira. On behalf of the Faculty of Art and Design, Jakarta Art Institute, I would like to thank you for your time and sincerity in sharing your knowledge at this international seminar. Once again, thank you very much. Uh, where is the certificate? Sertifikatnya panitia sudah Pak sudah tanggung. Oke, okay. okay. terima kasih. Oke, okay. yeah. oke, okay, please set Bu Indah, Bu Dira dan Mas Rodolfo ini untuk untuk Ibu Indah. Ibu Indah. Mohon diterima Ibu Indah sertifikatnya. Terima kasih banyak. Iya. Oke. Untuk Bapak Rodolfo, to Mr. Rodolfo, thank you very much. Please accept this certificate is honor for us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oke. Okay. Untuk Ibu moderator, Bu Dira, terima kasih banyak. Thank you very much. Ya, uh, hidup sekali hari ini. Ya, saya mewakili Fakultas. Terima kasih banyak, Bu Dira. Terima kasih, Bapak Dekan. That is all for uh, the certificate session. I'd like to give it back to the uh, Master of Ceremonies. Uh, yeah. okay. Thank you, Mr. Anindyo Widito. And also, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Madya Patra Iswar and Dr. Indah Cahyawulan and Rodolfo, Rodolfo Andaur for the very insightful lecture. So before we head on to the break, uh, now we will enter the photo session. So can I have everyone please turn on their cameras so that we could take a picture? Okay, we're still waiting for everyone to turn on their cameras. There are still a lot of people that hasn't turned on their cameras. Can you please turn it on? Okay, I'll take a picture. There are a few slides, so please be patient. Okay, one, two, three, say cheese. <laughs> Okay, another slide. One, two, 
three. Again, one, two, three. Okay, thank you everyone. Um, this event is not yet over. There will be another session with uh, two guests, Grace Sedargar from Scotland and Liam Lydia from San Francisco at 1 p.m. So I hope that you, could, you guys can still stay with us. Um, now we can start our break and see you guys at 1 p.m. Bye. Yeah, sampai jumpa. <laughs> Terima kasih. Terima kasih Bu Indah, Padito, Pak Rodolfo, Mbak.